Um, nearly two years ago now, we made the transition. The trustees, I, I, I personally want to say the trustees have played an amazing role in firstly making my life a lot easier and a lot harder. <laughs> easier in terms of having the support towards our vision, harder in terms of a lot more committees and meetings and such things, but bringing a huge amount of additional value in terms of what we do. So we thought it'd be helpful for you guys that maybe don't know so much of what goes on behind the scenes. For us to talk a little bit about some of the things that we do, some of the little projects we've got going on. Um, maybe a good starting point, Ian, would be, um, I can't remember when it was, it must have been at least four years ago that you, you sent an email saying, I'm gonna do this bike ride and I'd like to fundraise some money for the Optimum Health Clinic Foundation and you, yeah, cycled. Like, yeah, three and a bit years. Yeah, so you cycled across across England. Yeah, I did, didn't I? Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was the easiest thing you've done for the charity, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and this is how I'm rewarded. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, that was kind of um, the way I well, the way I got introduced to you and the clinic mm. was was through Kate, through our daughter, daughter yeah. um, who was diagnosed with ME quite a long time ago now, mm. and um, she. Uh, was referred to to the Optum Health Clinic by an osteopath who was treating her at the mm. time, um, and until then, like a lot of your other patients, had been sort of um, not really getting anywhere. Lots of false dawns and not really finding out what the real problem was. And 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 she, uh, we managed to get her down here to London to go to the 90-day program, which was a bit of an effort in itself, mm. as you can imagine. Sure. Uh, she had particularly severe form of the disease. Mm. Um, and she was completely inspired by it um, and made significant progress in a relatively short period of time, having done the 90 day program and the follow up um, uh, events that happened. And so I started to look at what you did um, and found out that one of the principles that you had was that ME was not really a, a traditional disease in that sense. It was more a series of body systems that are out of balance and I thought well actually that's not too far away from traditional pharmaceutical medicine which is my background mm. um, there's lots of things that are treated by more than one aspect and yes. more than one kind of intervention yeah. Yeah. yeah so so then yeah some mad friends of mine decided we'd cycle across England in two days um, so as I you thought, <laughs> yeah, as you do yeah no, there was nothing on television so we <laughs> fair enough to do that um, and so we did. So I thought, well, I'll do it and I'll raise some money for, for this um, really worthwhile. It wasn't a charity then, but uh, yeah. this worthwhile. But there was a charitable element, but it didn't own the, the organisation, yeah. Exactly. And then was your fatal mistake, you emailed me. And I said, well, let me take you out to lunch, say thank you for, for, for your efforts. And then promptly had you signed up as a trustee. I know, yeah. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. <laughs> so and then um, I think it was, you know, it was a year or two after that that we made the big transition that we made to the Optimum Health Clinic Foundation, owning the Optimum Health Clinic. That's a whole other story. But maybe we should just say a little bit about the, the long-term vision. And, you know, we made this whole change and we've got this whole yeah. kind of direction. I don't know how you'd summarise what, what we're really trying to do with all the research and all the things that are going on. Yeah, I guess the, the, the overriding principle is increasing awareness and availability. Mm. Um, there's a lot of evidence now that's been produced by other innovative people like Dr. Myhill mm. that ME is a physical disease. Right. Um, and there's also a significant unmet need. When you, when you work in pharmaceutical research, the whole industry is, is geared towards meeting unmet clinical need. That's kind of mm -hmm. The, the holy grail, if you like, mm. because if, it's not, if there's no unmet need, why bother doing it? Because there's things there already. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Right. Um, and there was some evidence, and I suppose there, well, there still is, that mild and moderate forms of chronic fatigue and ME can get some support and some relief from traditional you know, graded exercise and mm -hmm. CBT mm -hmm. therapies. But there is very little evidence to suggest that those with the severe form of the disease, of the disease um, get relief from that kind of intervention. So there's certainly an unmet need. Um, and one of the, the main reasons that we're trying to do this with research is to provide an increased number of patients with access to the treatments that, that we offer. Um, and the integrative medical part of the, 
of the picture is something which I think is incredibly important. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, I think one of the things that I'd like to say about it is that I would say in the, in the first, when we first started the Optimal Health Clinic, really it was about, you know, I'd recovered, would this work for other people? Like, yeah. could we develop some effective interventions that would help people? And then we went for a period of, okay, we, we can, you know, I can help some people. Nikki Gratrix, our first doctor nutrition, could help some people. Can we now scale this to other practitioners being somewhat effective in what yeah. we're doing? And we did that. And then it became, great, we've got effective treatments, but the vast majority of people that want to access them can't afford them. Yeah. And so it then really became as an organization, of course, we're always innovating and I'm always the first to say, we don't have all the answers. We're always developing our understanding of what we're doing. Mm. But we definitely have some answers that are very effective for a good number of people. Mm. So then the question becomes, how do we help people access the treatments? And yeah. that's really where the, 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 the key is the research. I mean, that's what makes it possible. It is, it has to be evidence-based, mm. you know? And, <clears throat> and the main provider of healthcare in this country is the NHS, mm. and they will not entertain any forms of treatment that are not evidence-based. So the whole direction of our research program is geared towards doing that, yeah. is providing an evidence base following on from that study that you did with Megan Arrell yeah. that was published in the BMJ, which was a very significant step. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's the first time that we've had something published in a mainstream medical And the first journal. time in our community it was done as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so that was a really significant step mm. to have that accepted. And, and so the plan for, the, medic, for the, the research is to do that over a period of years and, and not do just one study. Mm. That's the that's the point. We know we have to do yeah. more than one study because, again, in comparison to the traditional medical approach, you don't get approval by Nice or anybody else because of one study. You have yes. to do a whole range of approaches and a range of patient groups and a range of treatments. Yeah, and I think this is one of the things that I think is a really important point that I think it's it's and I understand it because I was on you know the, the different perspective many years ago. But I think people often don't realise how expensive research is how complicated it is how mm. long it takes you mm. know and i think it's i really get that for the patient it's like well i, I want it now i don't want to yeah. wait five years for you know more research to be done and da -zi -da -zi -da. Yeah. and of course the reality is whether we like it or not and actually we don't like it but we are where we are um and so maybe we just say a little bit about some of the current things we're doing so we set up recently a research and medicine committee i don't know if you want to just say a couple of words about that yeah, sure. Um, towards the end of last year, about a year ago now, um, we did an internal consultation process, which mm. I was sort of looking at, which gave me the chance to talk to pretty much all of the practitioners and the admin team and, and various other people in the group about uh, the direction of the then newly formed charity and this idea that, that you and I and, and a couple of others had had about making integrative medicine part of the offering that, Optimum, that the foundation had. And they all were very supportive of it and thought it was the way that we should be going and also expressed a very strong desire to become involved in that process. They believed in the end goal but had a little few concerns about how we are going to get there. So what we decided to do was to set up um, a research and medicine committee which provides a forum for practitioners from nutrition and psychology, and you and me, mm -hmm. um, to look at the plans that we have for research and to discuss them and for the practitioners to provide their expert advice as to whether they think that was a good idea or a bad mm -hmm. idea yeah. and the best way to enact those, those proposals. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, a consensus view goes to the board of trustees to, to implement the, the strategy. Um, and it's, I think it's working quite well. Yeah. We've, had, we've had a meeting and we've got another one Yeah, in two days' time. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, I think it's great. And I, and I think it's, um, there's a lot of good insight that comes out of that, in a sense, in terms of helping you solve the problems. And yeah. There's some really good expertise in that yeah, group as well. People is. who've worked for long periods in the NHS, who yeah. are really good at research, 
doing postgraduate qualifications in nutrition. It's yeah. a very yeah. strong grounding. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. And we should say um, we, uh, you know, we've been a bit slow on the publication side over the last kind of 18 months or so, mainly because, and we'll talk about in a moment, the plan for the full randomized control trial that we're doing. Mm -hmm. But we did recently have a publication, I can't remember where it was, but I can tell you where the paper is, um, which is on actually secretsrecovery.com, um, yeah. which was um, done by the Chronic Illness Research Team at the University of East London. Yes actually looking at secrets to recovery, um, which improved on some of the limitations that we had on the um, BMJ study mm -hmm. in the sense that we had an, a, an active control group um, and you know it was another step on the path, let's say, towards yes. what we're trying to do. You know, it had a few limitations in that it was limited to only eight weeks because of the research was doing an MSC and that was it. But, you know, again, we found some good positive things. Yeah, um, I, th so. I think that was important as well because I think as... as as was said in the text of the paper, um, the study that you and Megan did, um, the patients all had other interventions during, yes. the, during the period of that yes. study. They either had nutrition or psychology or both. Um, and this one, there was none of that. There was just the, the, the secrets recovery or the meditation was the, the control yes. group, which, which is a cleaner kind of approach. Yes. And, and there's some interesting conclusions came yeah. out of it. I thought. Absolutely, especially yeah. given it was only at eight weeks. Um, yeah. So, yeah. so let, let's just talk briefly um, about the the kind of holy grail, the randomised control trial, <laughs> which is something that you know for me is like what I wanted to do for kind of you know certainly at least eight years at this point. Um, and you know we're well, you, you say a bit about it. But I mean, we're we're fairly down the path in terms of hopefully negotiating an agreement with the with the university. And you know maybe let's say why is this so important this study? Maybe that's my question. Um, it's important in as much that it's, a, it's an expansion of the work that you did with Megan, um, which was published in the BMJ study, study. And that, as you quite rightly said at the conclusion of the study, was a preliminary look. And again, it was over a very short period of time, longer than the secret study, yeah. but it was still over three, three months. Three months it was, yeah. Um, which in terms of a patient's experience of ME, chronic fatigue, and the recovery from it... It's like a snapshot. It's a snapshot, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's, a, it's a blink of an eye. Yeah. So the purpose of doing the randomised control study is firstly, firstly to um, randomise patients to particular groups, which hasn't been done before using the OHC yeah. approach, and to do it and follow them up over a much longer period of time, mm -hmm. um, at least one year, um, with various interventions, either in psychology or nutrition or both, similar approach that you did through the, through the BMJ study, for at least 12 months uh, to and see. And we'll aim to have more follow-ups published down the line as well, so we can, we can show the kind of long, longer-term effect. Yeah. yeah, so that, um, if we get the same responses as you got within the 12-week period um, from your BMJ study, would hopefully show a significant improvement in some symptoms of ME and chronic fatigue over a, a much longer period of time. And we would hope more improvement because we've got more time to have more exactly. effect. Exactly, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, the people that we... <laughs> I, I think it's quite important that we establish quite strong, long-standing links with a, with a reputable university because, as I said earlier on, this isn't going to be just one study. Mm. Um, in order for us to become a leader in integrative medicine, um, we're going to need more than one study. Uh, and we've been talking, as you know, with, with a few people, um, one particular university, um, who have expertise in psychology, a very good interest in chronic fatigue and ME, and uh, also an expertise in postgraduate functional nutritional medicine. Mm. And although we can't, we can't announce the more details sure, at the moment, sure. as you know, we're fairly confident that we're going to be able to announce some kind of long-term collaboration um, with a university before the end of this year yeah. and then start the recruitment mm. um, in the first quarter of next year. Yes. And also we should say um, that's really where we'll be talking to a lot more to our, you know, our patient group and supporters about the fundraising side of it because yeah. you know, research yeah. costs money um, <laughs> and you know, or any profits that are generated by the optimal health clinic all go towards our research. But the optimal health clinic is not designed as profit as the primary focus, although of course it has to be commercially viable. The focus sure. is supporting patients and doing what we do to the best yeah. of our ability. And we, you know, we do the research and the long term is that um, we hope there will be government funding for treatment one day. 
That's yeah. really the, that, that's how it should Absolutely. be. That's how it is for other illnesses that there are effective treatments for, and that's how it should be for ME and chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. Exactly, yeah. I mean, it's, there are parallels with traditional medicine, I suppose, if you think about the way that people treat back pain. Mm. Um, <clears throat> 20 years ago, everybody just got prescription medicine, steroids, and high doses of anti-inflammatory drugs mm. and all sorts of problems. It didn't really work, and now it's a much more integrative approach. You can get osteopaths and chiropractors and get acupuncture, acupuncture. Now, yeah, yeah. and it's all used together to treat back pain. Mm. Um, but it takes quite a long time to yeah. get that kind of approach accepted. But, but um, I think that's the right way to go, mm. and we've got the tools to do it, and we've got the organisation to do it. Yeah. Um, in these um, areas, I think. There's lots and lots of opportunities yes. uh, to treat a condition, to have a different lifestyle, mm. to do whatever you want to do. The, the difficult thing is picking the right ones. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we can't do it on our own. And that's certainly where we'll, you know, we'll I imagine, hopefully we'll announce the collaboration end of this year and, and sometime yeah. early next year we'll announce the fundraising campaign. Yeah. And that's where ultimately we need our patients and people they know to support making this happen. And I think it really is, is, is the time, it will be the time for people that are frustrated that things don't happen to help make something potentially life-changing for a lot of people happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, so how far have I got to cycle next time? <laughs> well, if we work out how much you raise there, probably around the world a couple of times. Oh, yeah, right, okay. <laughs> That's all right, isn't it? <laughs> um, great. Anything else that, that you want to say, Ian? No, I, I just think it's such an exciting time. This is a really big transition for the organisation that you set up um, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it's moved from, from being a private business to a charity as a foundation, and we've, we've restructured the business. It's now in a much better place than it was and is more able to fit into this kind of growth into, into medicine, but retaining the psychology and nutrition approach, which is the foundation yes. of your business. It's yes. not, that's not going to disappear. It's not going to go into just being a straightforward mm -hmm. medical appro approach. We're, in, we're in incorporating that extra dimension into the, into the um, offering. Mm -hmm. And there's an awful lot of evidence now being generated to suggest that integrative medicine is the right approach for yeah. a number of diseases, particularly for chronic fatigue and ME, yeah. and I think we're on the right track and we're going to get there. Yeah, great. Well, firstly, I'm incredibly grateful for your support and the other trustees as well. I mean, you know, when I set the organization up, as you know, I had this passion. I wanted to help people. And it was a big thing, you know, 18 months ago, two years ago, to transition to being a, you know, this thing that sure. I owned, like my kind of first baby, and to, <laughs> to give it away to kind of charity. Um, but, you know, it's really, it's really exciting for me to see it be flourishing in the way that it is and to have the support of you guys and help make that happen. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. And welcome. thank you also for your, for your time this evening as well. Um, so for you guys watching, if you want any more information on the Optimum Health Clinic, you can go to www.freedomfromme.co.uk and there you can order a free information pack which gives you a lot more information on what the clinic does, how we work and what we offer. Um, you can also request a free 15-minute chat where you can talk with someone from the psychology team, nutrition team, and really get your questions answered about your situation. Do also check out secrets2recovery.com, which is where this video is probably playing. We've got over 100 hours of free resources, uh, sorry, 100 hours of resources that you can sign up for for a very um, affordable fee, uh, fee, also including a free MP3 player. So I meant to say it was free. Um, and that is a great way of really supporting your own recovery. So we will let you know when the next Six Recovery Live is. It'll be sometime in November. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Ian and to um, Natasha for their support this evening. And we will talk with you very soon. Bye-bye.